and most Americans don't understand this, only one half of 1% of total U.S. savings and investment assets are invested in precious metals related assets. The four decade mean is 2%. I believe that we're going to have reversion to mean. I'm not one of these guys who says that the U.S. Treasury market's going to collapse and gold's going to win the war against the U.S. dollar. Ridiculous. Reversion to mean. If you have reversion to mean, you quadruple demand for precious metals and precious metals-related securities in a market that is by itself 22% of the world's savings and investment capital market. That's what's going to happen. In this insightful finance discussion, Rick Rule, a seasoned investor, highlights the cyclical nature of exploration businesses and the importance of being a contrarian for substantial gains. He emphasizes the recent undervaluation of the exploration sector, presenting a unique opportunity for investors. Rick shares his perspective on the changing dynamics, the impact of company capitalization, and the potential for significant returns, using examples like Chicana Copper. Furthermore, he discusses the role of the Federal Reserve the performance of tech stocks, and the shifting interest towards gold, anticipating a reversion to the mean and a broadening interest in the gold market, which he sees as a democratized and underestimated investment opportunity. Let's dive into the rest of the video to hear Rick's full thesis. Bernard Baruch once said that the only person who absolutely bought at the bottom and sold at the top was a liar. It didn't happen. Could the exploration stocks go lower? Yes. Have I made a lot of money buying at or around market bottoms in the past? Yes. The constant for me is that these are capital-intensive cyclical businesses. And to really make money, you have to be a contrarian. When exploration is out of favor, I look to it. You'll remember two or three years ago, you and I having discussions about uranium. Deeply out of favor. Deeply hated. Look at what happened. Uh, that's why I'm in the exploration space. From my point of view, in the last 10 years, the exploration sector has been overvalued. The prices that people put on equity offerings and the lack of warrants didn't compensate investors for the risk that they were taking in exploration. That's changed. The exploration companies played chicken with capital markets, raising money just in time. They're out of money. They need to come to investors, and the pool of investors is smaller than it used to be. Here I am. 10 years ago, uh, it seemed to me that the best value propositions in natural resources were among the very largest companies, the very safest companies in the space. So I could be in names like Wheaton Precious uh, or Exxon or Franco Nevada. And given that I wasn't paid to take the risk inherent in the exploration companies, I didn't do it. Now we're in a circumstance where some of these companies have done 10 years of good work they're selling for a third of the price that they were selling for 10 years ago before they did the good work, and there's nobody competing with me on the bid. Uh, this is a wonderful circumstance, particularly, frankly, for a 70-year-old who, who isn't as able to work hard as he was 20 years ago. The fact that the younger, abler competitors of mine are on strike is just the very best possible circumstance for me. Uh, it's changed because companies that were adequately capitalized a year ago, some of them, of run out of money. I mean, run out of money. I'll give you an example. This is not an investment recommendation. Uh, a former market darling, uh, it's called Chicana, C-H-A-K-A-N-A. I think it ran up to probably, I don't know, 80 or 90 cents some years ago. Reasonably successful exploration. So I believe that the market cap was probably justified by mineral inventory uh, in some breccia pipes. Two great, great, great big targets. Uh, the people behind the company I know very well, high-quality people, pre-money market cap, $6 billion, uh, and they give me a full warrant. So if they have a, an exploration success, there's a real good chance of a 10-bagger or a 15-bagger with a full warrant. Now, people that play this game need to understand that in exploration, the most likely outcome in each investment decision that you make is failure. The most likely outcome is that you lose 20 or 25 percent before you can liquidate your holdings on a failure. But if the downside is 20 to 30 percent, but the upside is 1,500 percent with a warrant, it means that your real upside is 25 to 1. One 25 bagger amortizes a ton of 25 percent losers, and we're back in the place where the Chicana Copper 
type of circumstances, six, $6 million backstop pre-money valuations are around. So I'm back to. I think the Fed is hoping that they won't need to interest that they, they won't need to interest ease interest rates. I think that the Fed is hoping that they can talk about easing interest rates uh, and have the economy loosen up. But the Fed, we're in front of the Fed starting a new bank, so we talk to them a lot. Uh, the Fed recognizes that there's no fiscal discipline from Congress, and so the only thing that stands behind the U.S. economy and really idiotic inflation is the Fed. The Fed, in the absence of some control of spending by Congress, uh, the only tool that they have to keep the U.S. economy sort of on kilter is interest rates. Their preference would be not to cut. Uh, and if the U.S. economy continues to show reasonable signs of strength, I think they'll talk about cutting as opposed to cut. If you begin to see more carnage in the economy, then, of course, they'll be forced politically to cut interest rates. I think their preference in the absence of restraint from Congress, which doesn't seem to be in Congress vocabulary, uh, would be to keep interest rates higher for longer. I think it is still to come. Uh, I think from the point of view of generalist investors, not industry investors, that the performance of the so-called Magnificent Seven, the big tech stocks as such, that they, the generalist investor believes that those companies have enough pricing power that they themselves are inflation hedges. I, I mean, if you, where is this thing? If you look at the fact that Apple can sell me this little thing for $1,200 uh, and deliver enough utility to me that if they charge me 1400 I would still pay, suggests, I think, to the big investors that there's plenty of pa that there's plenty of pricing power in corporate America and that they don't need to come down to the gold space. I think that's a mistake. Um, I, I think it's a big mistake. I think with specific regards to Apple, although I'm not a, a tech investor, that their avenues for growth uh, are probably less dramatic than there were in the past. Their margins are insane. But I, I, I think it's a wonderful company, but I think it's priced for perfection. I don't think perfection occurs. But let's leave that aside. In the gold space, uh, it is arguable the U.S. investor, not a global investor, but a U.S. investor didn't need to own gold in the period 1982 to 2022. Declining real interest rates, globalization, the ability to export the U.S. fiscal problems by printing currency because we had the world's reserve currency meant that Americans didn't have to own gold. Everybody else did. Gold did well in other currencies, but not well in the U.S. dollar. I think that changed in 2022. I think, too, and most Americans don't understand this, only one half of 1% of total U.S. savings and investment assets are invested in precious metals-related assets. The four-decade mean is 2%. I believe that we're going to have reversion to mean. I'm not one of these guys who says that the U.S. Treasury market's going to collapse and gold's going to win the war against the U.S. dollar. Ridiculous. Reversion to mean. If you have reversion to mean... You quadruple demand for precious metals and precious metals-related securities in a market that is by itself 22% of the world's savings and investment capital market. That's what's going to happen. It, it, it tells you that there is enough interest in Costco and Walmart that there's room for it on their shelf. What is a bit of interest to me, I have in the last seven years graded now 80,000 natural resource portfolios at Rural Investment Media. And what has occurred to me is that the interest in gold is much broader. It used to be when I was talking to a gold audience, I was looking at myself in the mirror. There were old, fat, bald, white guys, right? That was the audience. In the last three years, my audience has become 35% non-Caucasian uh, and 30% female. Now, when I'm talking to an interest of my own constituencies and I look at it, at the audience, everybody's there. South Asian people are there. African people are there. Latin American people are there. Young women are there, which is important, separate and apart from the fact that they're pretty. Um, the democratization of the gold market is something that even the companies don't understand. They aren't gearing their investment pitches to the real gold market. They're gearing their pitches to the people that they used to sell to. And that's not where the market is anymore. In today's enlightening discussion with Rick Rule, we delved into the world of exploration businesses, contrarian investing, and the evolving dynamics of the natural resources sector.
Rick shared valuable insights on the changing landscape, emphasizing the current undervaluation of exploration companies and the unique opportunities this presents for investors. From the importance of being a contrarian in capital-intensive cyclical businesses to the strategic advantages of exploring when others are reluctant, Rick painted a compelling picture of the potential for substantial returns. He illustrated this with examples, such as Chicana Copper, shedding light on the risks and rewards associated with the exploration sector. We also explored Rick's views on the Federal Reserve, interest rates, and the performance of tech stocks. His perspective on the gold market, its historical context, and the potential for a reversion to mean provided viewers with valuable insights into a market that seems to be on the brink of significant change. As we wrap up today's discussion, we invite you to reflect on the key takeaways shared by Rick Rule. If you found this content valuable, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and share your thoughts in the comments section below.